Hi Ignite, I hope you've been having an amazing week. So before the video today, I need you to pause, go and get your Bible, go and download the worksheet, which will have been sent to you via email, and I need you to go and get a pen. Have you got them? Awesome. Doesn't eat nuts and honey. Did you take this? An unbeatable part of this nutritious breakfast. That's better than a body slam. Hey Ignite, I'm just editing this video that you're just about to watch and uh, we would love to make these videos way more personal. So what we'd love you to do is take pictures of what you guys normally have for breakfast. Don't include your face, you can include your hands, um, but take a picture or a video and email that to us and we will start putting those in to the videos that we make in the future. Thanks guys, bye. time for us to spend a bit of time with God and worshipping him. Uh, so the song for this week is Jesus You Are by New Day. Um, so just yeah sing along with this uh, video or listen whatever helps you engage. Um, yeah let's do it.
Look at this stuff. Some cereal. It's supposed to be good for you. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> So today's leader's challenge is to see who can move most cereal from one bowl to another using their face. Ignite, it's good to be here for another impossible interview. And today we've got Matt and Kylie, who you may recognize from Hope Community Church. Um, so they're both uh, wonderful, amazing people. They're the parents to Eden, um, and uh, they're both on staff here at Hope Community Church. Uh, and so, do you want to just say hello and tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, and uh, then I'll ask you the first question. Yeah. Hey. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Kylie, so I am the operations manager at church, which means sorting out lots of exciting and not so exciting things, <laughs> lots of organizing things. So yeah, that's what I do at the moment. Yeah, and I'm Matt and I, um, yeah, my main job is uh, raising a two-year-old daughter, um, but my second job is in charge of all the media at Hope. Um, so all the digital services and Sundays, things that we do on Sunday, um, I'm in charge. Cool. So my first question is, what do you guys normally have for breakfast? Well, I currently am having porridge for breakfast, mainly yeah, because our daughter only eats porridge for breakfast. <laughs> she's, she's gonna be two on Sunday. And her whole life, she's basically just eating porridge. So I have porridge with frozen cherries. Highly recommend that. And yeah, some nice. that as well, mixed in. Delicious. Good. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a slightly more elaborate breakfast. Uh, so I do like <laughs> of course a do. combo between, um, is it bran flakes, yeah. uh, muesli, granola. I mix it all in together. And then I do several varieties of fruits. So it's usually strawberries blueberries, banana, and sometimes one or two raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> Extravagant. <laughs> cool. Um, at, um, at Ignite this half term, we're looking at the whole thing of God eats impossible for breakfast. Nothing is too hard um, for God. So I wondered what stories you guys had of uh, impossible things that you've seen God do, either in your life or through things that you've done. So what would be some stories you guys have got? Over to you. <laughs> so one one main one that sticks out for me was um, so we we've lived overseas for the past four years or so before we came to Wyndham. Um, so we lived in Nepal, uh, which is a crazy country, and God basically told us to move there to work with a, a missionary organisation. And so we went out there for a couple of months to sort of see what it was like and then came back, packed our stuff and moved back and we had to get a visa to stay there for a year. And the visas in Nepal are really, really expensive. So we had to basically you say have... How much, say how much. <laughs> yeah, I will. So we had to have... A, it was in dollars, so I'll do it in pounds. It was about £4,000 or maybe £5,000 in a bank account there. 
and the visa were, itself was about two thousand pounds so we had to have about seven thousand pounds and we had just for a year <laughs> for one year and we literally had about that much in our bank account <laughs> like nothing there were, you know we didn't have any savings to fall back on so we literally just prayed and we're like god if you want us to stay in this country you're gonna have to provide seven thousand pounds <laughs> and we had a deadline as well you know we had to have it by this time otherwise we'd be kicked out of the country and amazingly god completely provided everything we needed so um unfortunately my granddad passed away just before we went back to Nepal and I got a small inheritance from him which kind of covered most of what we needed which we weren't account. for the bank account we weren't expecting that to come in so that was a complete surprise and then Matt was randomly offered some work where he got paid like I think it was like I think I got paid like a thousand five hundred dollars for a week's worth of work yeah which he, you know, he wasn't expecting to do any work. <laughs> it was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so the crux of it is that we basically had all the money that we needed for the, exactly the right time, and God just completely came through. So, yeah, that was one of my stories. That was a good, a good story. Yeah. And then uh, for me, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll talk about some um, crazy impossible healing stories that I've seen. Uh, so the, this was actually the first time I ever saw healing take place in front of me when I was praying for somebody. Yeah. I was in uh, the middle of the, they call it the bush bush. So you get the bush, which is like, you know, it's like rural area kind of thing, but the bush bush is basically in the middle of nowhere in Mozambique. Okay. Yeah. So um, we were there and there's no such thing as hospitals or clinics or anything like that there. So when we go out and we pray for people in the villages, we show them the Jesus film and we say after the film, if you would like us to do what Jesus did in the film uh, by healing people and things like that, come forward if you need any healing. So they kept the, I was given one guy, he was just like put in front of me and like this guy, there's something wrong with his leg. You need to pray for him. So his leg looked like a triangle. That's the shape it was. It was like that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't speak the local dialect Makua. So I had an interpreter and he, he said, basically he got hit by a bus and um, he, he was, he had a walking stick and that was the shape of his leg. And I was like, wow, um, I'd heard somewhere that I needed to encourage his faith and I can do that by possibly taking away his walking stick. So, <laughs> so I did that because I didn't want him to have faith in his walking stick for holding him up. So I said to him, I'm going to take away your walking stick. We're going to test it out a little. I want you to start moving a little on the leg and things like that. So I prayed for him and I got him to test it every so often. And as I was praying for him, I actually prayed for him for 25 minutes. And as I was praying for him, there was just improvement on improvement on improvement. And eventually his leg was actually straight Whoa. and he was sprinting on the spot to test it out. Um, so God literally shifted this whole like triangular leg perfectly in alignment and gave him the strength again so that he could actually sprint on the spot so by the end he was actually sprinting on the spot and that same night uh another guy just was like shoved in front of me this guy's deaf you need to pray for him and i was like okay and i prayed for this guy and i was like okay uh in jesus name be healed and so i put my hand in his ear and i was like you know i kind of felt like a almost like a pop, but I didn't really know what that was. So I felt it on my hand. It was like a, almost like a tap on my hand from something to like pressure or whatever releasing from his ear. And I didn't quite know what that was. So I just carried on praying again and praying again. And eventually I was like, oh man, like maybe I need to, I don't know how to see, should I, should I test it? So I started like clicking behind his ear and he was like, yeah, he, he could hear that. So basically what happened was as I, as I literally laid my hand on his ear the healing happened and it popped open in my hand and so he was he was healed of deafness in his i think it was his left ear yeah. whoa <laughs> cool great cool and um what kind of impact did those kind of things have on you at, in kind of that moment i know it's a bit of an impromptu question but obviously when you see those kind of things happen 
we have we need to respond in the in the kind of right way what how what what happened you know after god provided the money after you saw those kind of healings um what did that do for you do in you um so for me firstly it's kind of released this crazy humility over me i don't know i don't know how how else to explain it but i i just was in tears because i was like god actually used me to to perform a miracle with him you know it was like the two of us together doing it and and he he you know he he used me kind of thing and so this humility kind of came over me where i was just really humbled by by that fact that god would actually use me and then um the other thing that happened was it really um, kind of es- established or cemented the fact for me, because that was the first time I'd ever seen it before my eyes healing take place. Um, it cemented in me that God is a God who heals and he loves healing and he wants to heal everybody. Mm-hmm. And that took me on another journey where I was able to see that begin to happen uh, in a more normal way in my life. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, it it made me realize how much God really cares for us. You know, we have this, we have such a small mindset of, oh, I really need this money. How are we going to find this money? And I have a tendency to kind of, you know, try and problem solve. And well, maybe we could ask people and they could, you know, lend us. But but actually, God was always in control in that situation. And he was just saying, do you know what? You're my kids. And of course, I'm going to bless you with this. Of course, I can handle this. I have called you to this place. So of course, I'm going to take care of it. So it just really reminded me just to, to always put my faith in what God can do rather than what we think we can do, you know, because God's plan is always way bigger and better than ours. Yeah. Great. And so just to kind of finish off, what would be your one kind of top tip and feel free to have one each um, just for young people who want to see God do impossible things in their life and through them, what, what would your encouragement to them be? So for me, uh, I would say uh, never give up until you see the reality of God's kingdom. Uh, in your own life and in situations. So never give up praying uh, for, for sick people. Pray a pray hundred times, 200 times, whatever it takes until you see your first healing um, because that God kind of really enjoys that kind of tenacity in his children. They never give up, you know. And I would say take a risk and step out because, you know, with the financial story, if we hadn't have gone to Nepal (laughs) and waited on God for the money when we were there, then we might still be at home now, just, you know, waiting. So if if you're going to wait for God to see the miracle before you step out, then like, that's, that's not the point. That's not what God wants. He wants us to step out and take a risk. And in the stepping out, Mm. he, he provides and he really just shows you the impossible. Yeah. And just, just to have another little layer of that is, Whatever God tells you, so if, he, if you hear him and he tells you to do something, he will always make provision for it in whatever way is needed. So just step out. Uh, once he's told you to do something, just go ahead and do it and you'll see things will begin to change. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time and uh, hopefully see you soon. Take care. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Uh, a well-being with Catherine. Uh, this week um, I really want to talk about um, social media. So this uh, session is called Switch Off. Um, so what I want to talk about is um, how social media can affect our emotions, how it can affect our well-being um, and what it is that we're putting into our lives and what it is that we're expressing on social media. So my challenge for you this week um, is one day a week I want you to give your phone to one of your parents um, or someone you know can keep it safe for you and don't use it for a day. You'll see it has great effects on your well-being because you're not looking at negative posts on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. You're not scrolling endlessly through social media and it's something that can really, really help your emotional and mental well-being. Yeah, it's a great thing and we love social media, but 
there comes a point when it's too much um, and you can turn it off for a little while um, and you'll see the positive effects of it. So that's my challenge this week. Switch off for just one day uh, and see how you get on and maybe switch off for two if you're feeling brave. See you later guys, bye bye. guys it's a privilege to be able to come to you today with a teaching uh, in our series of discussions on the impossibilities that God eats up for breakfast and uh, for today we are in Exodus chapter 14 discussing the miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea so why don't you hit the pause and take time to read the passage and just come back and then we'll pick up our discussion from there <laughs> Excellent. So welcome back. Uh, I'm sure you enjoyed reading that passage. I think really this is um, one of the, the, the greatest accounts in terms of God's acts in the redemption of his people from tyranny in Egypt in captivity to Pharaoh and his people uh, in finally setting them free uh, from, from, from the Egyptians. I like what God says in verse 14, tell, tell, telling the people and Moses that that you don't need to do anything, just be calm and trust in me and see the salvation of the Lord. And then he, he adds that the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more. I love that. And uh, we are, we're trying to address three questions. First of all, what is the impossibility here? Number two, why is it important? And three, how should we live our lives in view of this impossibility that God has just eaten up for breakfast. So to the first question, I think you will all agree with me that from the time of creation till now, we've never heard of anyone attempt to part the sea or a river or the lake or a pond uh, into two for anyone to pass through. It could only take the power of God to utilize the wind to turn water into a wall. And I like the bit about the story where we are told that they walked through on dry ground. You know, I would have expected that by the time God, God parts the, the Red Sea that, you know, the place would be so muddy uh, and they would make a mess of themselves. They would, you know, have to take a long time to cross because it's a muddy puddle and all that. But we don't see anything like that. It was dry ground the instant God separated the waters. And he even asked them to pick up stones as memorials for their children's children about the power of God that sets them free from slavery. And I think we begin to appreciate also the, the impossibility of this feat when we, we, we remember the, the army of, of Egypt that was pursuing these guys. We are told that Pharaoh selected 600 chosen chariots to pursue these guys. And you've got to understand, Egypt was very skillful in the use of chariots. They had lots of horses and lots of chariots who a lot of you know, horsemen who were skilled in the riding of these chariots. And if you remember, if you read your Bible carefully, you realize that anytime the people of Israel were in trouble and they were attacked by other nations and they needed help, the first option was to, to go back to Egypt. I think one of the accounts in, in Isaiah 31 or so, God was, was not happy with them and God, God asked them that the, the Egyptians, are they, are they God? Are they, are they God? He said the Egyptians are, are man and not God. And they are horses are flesh and not spirit you see so in in verse one of isaiah 31 i think it says um woe to those who go down to egypt and rely on horses you know who trust in chariot because because they are many and in horsemen because they are strong so even god acknowledges that these guys were really strong in the use of chariots and horses and so when they were chasing the people of israel you can imagine when they look at behind them and saw this great army coming they looked to the left and looked to the right and there were just mountains and the red sea was in front of them at pi high high roads you can imagine the confusion and the fear 
and no wonder you know some of them began to accuse moses they were like you know why did you bring us to this place is it because uh, uh, there are no graves in egypt that you have brought us here to die in the wilderness you know they panicked but then we see the power of god that when he had told them he, he promised them that the egyptians that they see today they will not see them anymore and that's exactly what he did he he delivered them completely the waters came and swallowed up the, these these powerful soldiers and the chariots and in the morning all they could see were their dead bodies by the seashore god promised to deliver them and indeed he did deliver them completely at that point they were free forever from the tyranny of egypt they were not going to to see the egyptians anymore so we ask ourselves why is this story important and i think if we look carefully at this account we see in there a picture of our great salvation that God wrought for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, uh, Paul writes this in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. Paul says this, uh, And you were dead in the trespasses, trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Before we came to Christ, we were slaves to the passions of our flesh. We walked after the pattern of the world. The God of this world held us bondage. You see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, you know, so that they would not see the light of the gospel of our blessed Lord Jesus. Satan held us captive. And Paul says here, we were dead in our, in our transgressions and sins. Dead men cannot save themselves. He could only take the power of God. Just like he could only take the power of God to deliver his people from Pharaoh once and forever. And that's exactly what God did. If we read in verse, five, we, uh, verse 4 and verse 5 of Ephesians 2, this is what Paul says, but God... Being rich in mercy. Did you see that? But God, he could only take God. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And just like, uh, just like Pharaoh, you see, when God saves us and translates us from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom, the kingdom of his son. Satan does not give up easily. You know, sometimes he comes at us with doubts. We meet certain situations in our lives where Satan, you know, tricks us to believe that God cannot see us through this situation. This situation looks impossible. You know, he tries to sometimes bring challenging situations our way just to draw us back to the world, back to Egypt, you see. But these are the times that we need to trust that the God who saves us is able to save us continuously and is able to save us finally and unto the end to our desired destination. This is what Paul uh, tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 when he talks about this account. When, if you read it, he, he talks about how the people pass through the Red Sea, etc. And this is what he says in verse 11. He said, Now these things happen to them as an example but were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. You see, so whatever God did in time past, whatever God has done here that we are discussing is an example of what he can do today and what he can do for us in the future. His work in time past, the, the, the hymnist says something, he said, his love in time past forbids me to think he will lead me at last in trouble to sink. The same God who parted the Red Sea is able to deliver us from any impossible situation that we face as his children. God will not bring us from Egypt to Pi High High Roth and leave us there only to be captured by the enemy back into slavery. No. So we ask ourselves, how should we live our lives in view of this impossibility that God has just eaten up for breakfast. And I think we can trust our God in whatever situation that seems like an impossibility. I don't know what it, it could be, uh, a new subject that you've started learning in school that seems like 
an impossibility, something that seems so difficult to grasp. It could be a problem at home, a challenge, a situation. It could be a relationship problem. It could be anything. Whatever the situation, we can trust God that if he has done this in the past, he can do the same today and make a way for us where there seems to be no way. You see, the problem with these Israelites is that despite the miracles, despite the signs and the wonders, they failed to believe in the God who performed these miracles. This is what Paul, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 5. That nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. What a sad testimony. What a sad conclusion. And you read, uh, if you read Exodus 15 downwards, you see that the people continue to doubt. When they reach a place called Rephidim, they, they, they were hungry and they started doubting, they were complaining. They reach a place called Massa and Meribah, they were fighting Moses, that they want to go back to Egypt because they were not getting water to drink, etc. We should not be like them. We can look upon the miracles of God here, what we're discussing about the impossibility he eats up eats up for breakfast and trust him completely that he is able to save us to the uttermost who come to him through Christ Jesus. Friends, let's continue to trust God even now when everything seems uncertain with this situation that we currently find ourselves in, that God will not bring us to 2020 only to leave us to perish. He will see us through to the very end. Let's trust him. Come what may will always come through for us. God bless you and see you again next time. Bye-bye. Now you can have adventures with Sugar Bear in your own backyard with your very own Sugar Bear toy. It's free on specially marked boxes of Super Golden Crisp or by mailing in the certificate. Today we're just going to spend some time praying with God for, for boldness and courage to really share our faith with our friends and, and our family and, and those around us. As um, One of the commands Jesus gives us is, is to go and make disciples of all nations um, and that can be a really challenging thing at times, like that stepping out and talking to people about our faith can be really hard but we can ask God um, for help with that and to, to give us a spirit of courage and to give us boldness and to give us real favour um, as well in those situations. So we're just going to spend a bit of time um, praying about that today and I just want to say it's really important to remember that that we are commanded to step out and to um, to share our faith with people but actually it's God who is the one in, who's in control of how other people respond to that um, if we step out and share with someone and it doesn't make any difference to them that's that's fine like you've done the right thing you've done a really great thing by stepping out by sharing that's what you're commanded to do um, and we can just leave the rest of that with God and um, he'll work in his timing how that person may or may not respond so just uh, there is no pressure on um, the, what kind of response you get but actually the stepping out is the thing that's really important here um, so I just want you to to take a moment to think of um, a friend or a family member who um, hasn't come to know Jesus yet and or someone who you might have had some brief conversations with in the past um, but actually that you'd really love to talk to a bit more about and you'd really love to share a bit more with them um, so just have a think about that person and um, maybe if you can find a picture of you together or of them or something like that just to kind of help jog your memory and it might be really helpful this week just to like either print that picture off and like pin it on your wall or on your door or perhaps set it as like a, a screen on your phone and something like that just so you're always reminded that oh, actually I really want to have that conversation with that person I want to talk to them God please help me with that um, and then we're just I'm just going to say a simple short prayer now and um, if you just find some time in, in the week as well, just to, you can either repeat what I say or just spend some time just asking God for that boldness and that courage um, to speak with that person and to, to share more of your faith with them. Yeah, Father, we thank you that you're the light of the world and that when you come to live in us, we become that light as well and we can shine into the darkness that we see all around us. And Lord, we just ask for, for your courage and, and boldness when we, when we step out with people, Lord, and step out to, to talk to people about you, Father, that you'll give us the words to say and um, that you'll just really open hearts to your work Lord, and your love for them. Father. Amen. <laughs>